Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Genevieve. And in today's video, we are transforming this beautiful piece of furniture on my channel. I love to do DIYs, Goodwill hauls. I love antiques. So if you guys are interested in those kind of videos, definitely hit that subscribe button and let's get started on this piece. I am truly so excited about this piece. When I tell you guys, I have been hunting at antique stores for something like this. And when it popped up on Facebook Marketplace, I, I was like, I will be there first thing in the morning. And I was like a kid on Christmas morning. I got up, got ready, and I knew I was going to pick up this beautiful piece. Um, it is small, like in reference to like my fireplace. I have a lot going on right now. This is just real life. I've got nothing on this wall, holes in the wall. <laughs> There's like uh, drywall dust on the floor. So there's a, a little bit of real life for you, but in reference to like my fireplace, this guy is really small, um, but I love it. I am gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do to it. I ordered library pools for it. I am just so excited. I'm going to quickly go over the products you're gonna need. We're not gonna ramble on. I just wanna get started on this project. And I know that when you click on these videos, you just wanna know what to do, how to do it, let's move on. <laughs> so we've got Zinzer Bullseye Primer, we've got Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in Linen White, and a water-based polycrylic. Do not put polyurethane on top of chalk paint. It will yellow. Polycrylic also has a tendency to yellow, so be very careful. Apply with thin coats with a foam brush as such. And it is important to use a primer prior to chalk painting and then putting on polycrylic because this will block the wood tones from coming up when you apply this. The polycrylic doesn't necessarily yellow the chalk paint. It is pulling the natural wood tones from the original piece of furniture. So that's why it tends to yellow. So that's what you have to be careful with. You will use just a basic, literally this is basic, just a cheap basic brush. I get these at Home Depot, Dollar Tree, Walmart. I usually go for an inch to an inch and a half. And then I told you about that brush. And then at the end, we are going to sand because um, I want this to be a very chippy piece of furniture. So I picked up 150 grit sandpaper for my sander. And this is gonna be the strangest thing I've ever shown on my channel. I forgot to pick up Vaseline. I learned a Vaseline technique from Jamie Ray Vintage that apparently if you put Vaseline on your piece before painting it, when you go to sand, it will chip off like flaky pieces. It won't look like you just sanded the edge. It'll like flake off. So I forgot Vaseline and I figured, hmm, this triple antibiotic ointment might work because it has like that same texture. So we're gonna try this. And if all else fails, whatever. <laughs> Just repaint the piece again, whatever. Um, so yeah, we're gonna give this a shot. Otherwise, we're gonna use Vaseline if you have it at home. Um, and that's gonna go on before any of your paint. All right, so I'm going in with my first coat of primer. And what I would recommend is wherever you put the Vaseline or the ointment, you're gonna see here, um, ignore the Band-Aid on my finger, you're gonna see here that it applies a little bit clumpy. And this is so that when you go over with your sander, that's gonna chip right off. So I understand why Jamie from Jamie Ray Vintage does this now. Um, so. If you can, like where you see these little chunks of your ointment or Vaseline, try to go over that thick. And um, I was scared it was gonna like goop up my brush, but it's not, it's actually working just fine. So I would definitely recommend you put it on a little bit thick on top of that piece 
where you put the ointment or Vaseline and then blend it out. So let me show you, like I'm gonna put a lot on my brush. Well, not like too much, but I'm just gonna go over it like that and then just blend it out. And then it won't really stick to your brush. And this is just primer, it doesn't have to look perfect. And then once the primer dries, hopefully that'll dry it too, but you see how it's clumpy? When you go over that with a sander, it's just gonna nick right off because the sander wants to hit a flat surface. So, ooh, I'm getting excited. I wanna show you guys why it's important that you prime dark pieces like this. So this is one coat of primer and you can see how that yellow orangey tint is coming through. Like see this entire streak of yellowy orange. Sorry about Bryce drinking water. Um, I'll probably have to go in with a second coat of primer to prevent more bleed through, but that's why it's important if you have a really dark piece, you need to prime. Okay, so all of the drawers are primed with two coats of primer and they're dry now. And you can see like this is the area where I put the um, ointment. So you can tell how it dried. It's still not dry, it's kind of tacky, but um, I don't think it's going to dry, it's an ointment. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the chalk paint now, but this is how it's looking so far. And then I have this primed as well with two coats of primer. Also Maggie's really enjoying the nice warm fire. Ain't that nice? <laughs> oh, I love you so much. So this is the piece with two coats of primer. And Bryce also wants to come over and say hello. Hi, bud. You saying hi? Say we cut your nails so it won't be so loud in our videos. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I love these dogs. Like my little babies. Yeah. So I'm going to apply one coat of chalk paint now. So the chalk paint is doing a pretty good job of covering up the areas where I put the ointment. So here you can see how like that natural finish wants to come through. So I'm hoping that once the chalk paint dries on top of that and I go over with the sander, it'll just chip that area right off. Here's another area where that ointment was. I gotta clean up these brush strokes a little bit, but I'm not too worried about the brush strokes. Um, since I'm gonna go in and sand after. Um, and I hope you were able to see how yellow that piece looked before. Like if you look at the difference in colors, um, if you went in and tried to chalk paint right onto that surface, it would look this color. So that's why I always say to prime your dark pieces first. So I'm about to take the base out to sand it, and I wanted to show you guys. Bryce, do you have to bark as soon as I record? 
I wanted to show you guys how this is dried for a full day and it has two coats of primer, two coats of chalk paint, and still some wood, original wood tone is bleeding through. So imagine if I hadn't primed this piece, um, what it would look like. So I noticed some of this spotting. I apologize for the way I'm talking. I have an N95 around my neck <laughs> to sand. But um, I took the drawers out. Some of them had spotting like this and I was able to sand most of this stuff away. So I'm gonna try, but I may end up having to prime again and chalk paint again on the top. Um, I will say that this stuff, the ointment, oh my God, my hands and I'm covered in dust. My um, ointment that I used has dried and it is like chipping away just as I hoped it would. So we're going to take this outside and try to sand off some of this spotting. And um, I'm going to show you guys how I use the sander to really define some of these areas and chip away at stuff. So I really love the way that the ointment made the paint chip off, but there is still residue. So after I sanded off that 
that layer and it pulled the paint off, um, there is still like a sticky residue from the um, layer underneath. So I just have a disinfectant wipe um, and I'm just going over that, just like that. And it's not taking off any more paint, but it's just getting that sticky layer off um, so that you can see the wood underneath more clearly and then you won't have that sticky texture anymore. So if you're going to use like the Vaseline or the ointment trick, I would go over at the end with a wipe or some spray or something just so you get that residue off. And the wipe is not like affecting the paint around or anything. So Also, I really hope you guys love my jammies. <laughs> I'm not one of those YouTubers that like puts on jeans to do DIY projects at her house. Like no freaking way am I putting on jeans for that crap. Anyway, yeah, I'm just going over Honestly, with this wipe, it's working just fine. Going over those wood spots just to get some of that dust off. If there's any of that residue anywhere, see like it's down here, just to clean it up a little bit. Here is the set of pools that I got. I ordered them from Amazon. They came with the screws. So I will leave a link down below and add a little screenshot of what they look like on the slide here and I'm gonna go ahead and attach them all right guys so here is the final reveal I used the cutting boards oh here's my damaged finger always something wrong with me <laughs> so um I used the cutting boards that I redid in my trash to treasure video and I just layered them on top here and then I have a doily that I just all this was just decor that I found I had an um a doily that I found at an antique store I told you guys about these dishes um or no I think that was in the live in it country tour but I mentioned in that tour that I always find these dishes at the goodwill and I use them to hold candles it looks a lot better than just putting a candle on top of something. So I always use these dishes for just a little extra decor. And then I stuck a candle in there. And one thing I like about the cutting boards is it covered up some of that bleed through. Um, I know that if I try to do a poly coat on top of this, all of that bleed through is gonna be worse. So I decided not to um, do a top coat. <laughs> you can have the fire off with your video. <laughs> Aesthetics, right? Yes. So, yeah, I decided not to do a poly. Um, it would have just probably ruined this piece. You'll kind of be able to tell if you should put a top coat or not on. And once I saw this stuff kind of coming through, which maybe I'll fix one day, it doesn't really bother me. I'm not going to be like staring at it all day long. So um, you'll be able to tell if stuff like this starts popping through on your piece, you're probably better off not doing a coat of polyurethane. I mean, a coat of polycrylic. So that is the piece, it's all done. Um, I am so excited with how this turned out. So I'm gonna do a little before and after for you guys to see. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.